In this brief video, I'm going to teach you about ionic bonding, as contrasted with uh, covalent bonding that I've talked about in an earlier video. Before starting, I wanted to tell you a funny story. For the duration of my time going to college, uh, that is from about 2002 until 2010, uh, getting my bachelor's followed by my PhD, I was really poor. Now, I know that sounds like a first word problem. My poverty did not compare in any way to the kind of poverty that we see in third world countries or second world countries. So I'm not trying to hold up some big uh, cry fest here. I'm just saying that by uh, the standards of uh, my peers with whom I associated, I was really, really dirt poor. That said, it should come as no surprise that my wardrobe was quite crappy through all of those years. One evening, I uh, held a service activity with the Boy Scouts, uh, over whom I was a leader at the time, in which we cleaned the parking lot and the building of a Red Cross Center. After we were done, the director there asked us if we wanted some free t-shirts that were left over from a 5K they had had uh, earlier that week. And I said, yeah, I'll totally take a free t-shirt. So he gave me a free t-shirt that uh, advertised a 5K that I had never run in. I was extremely excited because the next day we were going to be receiving a visit from K.C. Nicolau, who is a very, very famous and uh, extremely accomplished organic chemist who came to the university where I went to graduate school to speak. I was just so enthused to be able to meet him in person and get a photograph with him. Uh, when I went there, I told my PhD advisor, I said, and I was kind of proud of myself, I said, hey, you have to see this new shirt that I got yesterday. It's free. And he looked at this 5K run shirt, and he just looked me up and down at the shabby quality of my clothes, shook his head and said, Mike, you are a poster boy for poverty. <laughs> I'll never forget that. It's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> All right, now let me talk to you about ionic bonding. According to our text, and reality. <laughs> ionic bonding generally results from the interaction of metals, which are on the left side of the periodic table, with nonmetals excluding the noble gases, which are generally on the right side of the periodic table. For example, when sodium metal in a solid is brought into contact with chlorine gas, Cl2 gas, a violent reaction ensues. Here's what happens. I've got my sodium metal interacting uh, in a one or a two to one ratio with chlorine gas, they react violently. Sodium metal is very, very reactive. Chlorine gas is toxic. And after they're done, they form sodium chloride, table salt, which we actually need to live. <laughs> so if you had the ability to look very, very closely at, a, at sodium chloride, you would see that it's composed of sodium cations and chloride anions arranged in a three-dimensional array, kind of like this model shown here, with all the sodium uh, cations being surrounded by complementary, uh, which have positive charges, being so surrounded by complementary chloride anions and vice versa. This is called uh, an ionic lattice. All ionic compounds have different uh, structural shapes, kind uh, like this one, although they come in a variety that we'll talk about later. But the point is this, this type of lattice structure is not seen in uh, covalent or molecular compounds that we've talked about earlier. And covalent bonds are not like ionic bonds. In ionic bonds, there's generally a complete transfer of electrons, while in covalent bonds, there's a sharing of electrons. So you don't see this type of complementary lattice building with molecular compounds in the same way. So sodium chloride forms when sodium transfers its single 3s electron to chlorine like this. You can imagine a sodium atom having that single unpaired electron that it wants to get rid of, pumping it and thrusting it up and into the chlorine. It now becomes a sodium cation, and chlorine becomes a chloride anion. So the arrow indicates that the electron right here is being transferred from the sodium into the chlorine atom. Each ion, the sodium cation and the chloride anion that result, ends up with an octet of electrons. Sodium now has, uh, with a positive charge, a configuration like that of neon. And chloride with a negative charge has a configuration like that of argon. So now they feel like noble gases. That is all I'm going to say about ionic bonding. But I'd like to finish by sharing with you another hilarious chemistry cat brought to you by quickmeme.com, endothermic reactions. I studied them before they were cool. <laughs> Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.